So ihr Lieben, das, was ihr gerade gesehen habt, das war das Versprechen, was Finnland euch geben will und geben wird. Ein Versprechen, was ich denke, was sehr schön ist, was jeder von uns ernst nehmen sollte, einhalten sollte und ich sage an der Stelle zu euch zunächst einmal Hübe Huamenta, das ist finnisch und heißt so viel wie Guten Morgen, Guten Morgen aus Hamburg, ich begrüße euch alle ganz herzlich zu unserer weiteren Folge unseres MySports Stream TV und heute, das habe ich euch angekündigt oder wir euch angekündigt, heute freuen wir uns auf einen ganz besonderen Gast und das ist die Ines und die Ines vom Finnland Convention Büro, die wird uns heute Einmal die Destination Finnland und ihre Möglichkeiten für Meetings, Incentives, Kongresse und Events präsentieren. Ich persönlich freue mich sehr darauf. Ich darf euch verraten, ich bin als junger Bursch, als Ju also als, genau genommen war ich noch im Kindesalter, mit meinen Eltern regelmäßig nach Finnland gereist. Es ist eine tolle Destination, ein ganz, ganz tolles Land. Ich mag die Destination sehr und ich bin sicher, nach diesem Webinar seid ihr echte Finnland-Freunde oder sogar Fans. Aber nun schauen wir erst einmal nach Helsinki und schalten live rüber zur Ines. Hallo Ines, Hüve Huomenta. Hallo, Hallo und Hüve Huomenta von meiner Seite auch. Well. Uh, uh, thank you Peter for having me and inviting me to speak, speak, speak to you all about Finland. Finland. Uh, uh, this this is the hidden, hidden gem located here, here far up in the north. north. So my, so my name is Ines Antipork and I'm joining you today from my home office here in Helsinki where it's unfortunately raining at the moment. It is raining at the moment, you told me, you told us, thank you very much, but what do you think, when will the first snow will be in Helsinki this year? Actually, already last week, week was, it was it Thursday, Thursday? we woke, woke up, up to the very first snow, first snow. But, that but that only, only lasted for like two, two hours, hours not, not for longer. longer. So, so I would think, think that, that here in Helsinki, Helsinki which, which is here on the south of Finland, Finland we, will we will only have the real winter, winter and the first real snow, snow in January. January. But, but up in Lapland, we are already skiing, so the winter is already here. Ah, oh, great. That sounds good. And uh, we are still waiting for Rudolf, the red rose, <laughs> red nose ring here. <laughs> and Santa Claus, of course, coming from, from Rovan. Is this Rovaniemi or? From, from Rovaniemi. Rovaniemi, that's correct. Ah, great. That's the hometown of Santa Claus. And, and, and reindeer. Uh, and Rudolf, of course. <laughs> so, Ines, uh, first of all, Welcome in our MySports Stream TV show. We do, will do a, a, sh a short MICE webinar and you will introduce us a little bit and our audience uh, a little bit more about uh, Finland. And I think, please explain us your home country and tell us what kind of options and possibilities event planners will have to organize your conferences, meetings, incentive congresses or events. Oh yes, absolutely, because uh, uh, when, when you're looking for an unforgettable destination for, for the events, whether it's a meeting or a congress or an incentive trip, I'm sure Finland is a great choice because there are plenty, plenty and, and plenty of options. options. You brought us a little, a couple of pictures, and I think I will start now a few pictures so the people, the audience can see our impressions from Finland. So please explain a little bit what we are seeing. Yes. Well, Finland is known to be um, a country where, where there is equal rights for everybody. And I, I think this is part of the thing that makes us the happiest country in the world. Finland is known for, the, for its uh, very high standards in education and in healthcare. But Finland, Finland is also one of the greenest countries in, in, in Europe. Uh, I would say about 70% of the country is uh, covered by forests. So that, that makes uh, us very, very green, but also very sustainable. The sustainability is very deep rooted in, in our DNA. It's very important to us. And that also uh, covers the, the meeting aspects. All the meeting venues and service providers are really dedicated to sustainability in everything that they do. Finland is also known as the land of uh, thousands of lakes. And to say thousands is, is only a big under, under uh, a statement because actually the real number of lakes is almost 200,000. We also have about 40 national parks here in Finland, so a lot of nature available for, for the programs. Um, we enjoy massive everyman's rights here in the Nordic countries, which means that everybody can roam free 
in, in the nature and everybody can enjoy uh, the treasures of the nature for free without any permissions or, or uh, uh, applications. And we also enjoy the sounds of silence in the nature. So if you're really looking for something special and exquisite, then Finland is the choice. Uh, the, the, nothing is more actually uh, Finnish than, than the saunas. I'm sure Peter has already uh, experienced that himself. Uh, yes, Ines, yes, yes. Sauna experience is a huge experience when I, uh, of course, joined Finland. And I know the sauna is a very big, a great culture there in Finland. And um, so I also know uh, from the Tulling Silja line, the cruise line, that they have also a meeting sauna on board. So please, can you explain a little bit more our audience what's happened with the Finnish sauna culture? Yes, nothing, nothing is more Finnish than the sauna. It's a very important part of our culture and it cannot be compared to anything else. It, sauna is a place where we Finns go at regular intervals and it's, we don't go too long without a sauna. Um, for centuries it has been a place where we can go and, and relax and get some even help so, for some physical symptoms. And it's, it's also a way of life here in Finland. And as you said, there is a sauna everywhere. Uh, most of the meeting venues or at least the hotels would have their own, own saunas. And for example, in, in Helsinki, there is a hotel with 100 hotel rooms which have a sauna in it. So I definitely encourage you to, to uh, offer the sauna experience for the clients as well, because then they will really get an idea what is uh, what it's all about. and and. Uh, there is no uh, problem in uh, providing different turns for men and women, and you can always wear your bathing suits. So that's not a pro problem for corporate groups. So it's, 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 a, it's a place where we find the relaxation and where we discuss the real issues. It's not a place for small talk in, in any way. So it's a very important part of the Finnish culture, which I always enjoy uh, to offer the, to the clients as well. Yeah, and I, I know that uh, many uh, uh, Finnish people, they also have a small house called a Möcki, yeah, a Möcki uh, next to a lake. And all Möckis also, of course, have uh, a sauna place. So it's a nice culture and it's really nice. So that was our first impressions are really uh, uh, interested. One other thing, Ines, one question I have. Uh, can you explain a little bit for the audience? Um, uh, about the actual situation, you know, we have the pandemic situation, but now I think mm. there will be light at the end of the of the tunnel. Can you explain a little bit about uh, um, what? How is the situation actually in in Finland? Yes, the situation has uh, actually been very good, if I may so say so, um, during uh, the whole time during the whole pandemic. We have only experienced some 22,000 cases of, of corona uh, uh, since the beginning of this year. But of course, you have to keep in mind that we are Russian, but only 22,000 cases. Although the numbers are slightly on the increase right now, and we are still facing a lot of travel restrictions. So unfortunately, international travel is not allowed to Finland at the moment. So we still have to sort of keep dreaming about bringing the events and clients to Finland. But just this morning, I read from uh, Bloomberg's that Finland has is among the top five countries uh, which have dealt really well with the pandemic situation. And I think we can be very proud of that. And also after when we uh, at some point we are on the other side, then I'm sure Finland is a good option because there is plenty of space we have uh, uh, provided a lot of uh, measures to ensure the safety of the meeting planners and the meeting clients. So, so I'm really looking forward and po being positive about the future. Oh, Ines, that sounds really positive. It sounds for a very positive future. And uh, when we chat about Finland too, please, one thing uh, we need to chat because I'm a big fan of Mustika Piraka, Emanzika Piraka, and you can now explain the audience a, a little bit more about the food and beverage in your country, please. Yes, absolutely. 
because food is a very important part of all events, of course. And also in food, we appreciate the simplicity and honesty. And everything starts with pure ingredients from the local nature. So the mustikka piirakka and mansikka piirakka that Peter mentions, they are the, the blue, blueberry pie and strawberry pie, which taste absolutely fantastic uh, in the summertime. Because we always want to produce the best local seasonal ingredients for the clients as well. And all the regions have their own delicious uh, characters and traditions in terms of food as well. And due to, due to the, the, the northern location, we have uh, uh, the clean and, and naturally nutrient uh, uh, rich food. We tr uh, try to provide a lot of seasonal products. And especially the summer, when we have the very, very long summer days, they, they sort of enhance the aromas in all the berries and like the blueberries and strawberries and they the the summer nights which are totally light bring an extra flavor to all the berries so i would really uh, encourage all the clients to try these wild delicacies from from the nature and they can actually go even picking their own blueberries and preparing their own pies and and, and food from really low product there's a uh, seasonal variety in, in the food, in the in the autumn time, it's the mushrooms that you can go, go picking, and then you um, the fish that comes all through the year from our lakes. So that's that's really really local, and that's something that we want to always offer to, to the clients. Yeah. You make me hungry. You make me hungry. It tastes so wonderful, delicious, <laughs> delicious. <laughs> Thank you very much. When we chat about when we chat about you spoke you spoke already about a few activities uh, uh, groups can do in Finland, and uh, so um, my question: Can you explain a little bit, please? And you, I know you bought us some pictures. Can you explain, please, a little bit more about what kind of activities are possible? in Finland? Absolutely, because the, the options are endless. Because there is so much um, water, I think water is an, a very integral part of all, all the activities programs. In the summertime, you can go to the lakes and go kayaking, uh, taking a cruise on a private uh, old schooner. And uh, especially in the summertime when we have the midnight sun and the northern parts of the country actually have 24 hours of daylight, you can all do, the, do these activities even at midnight. So you can do stand up paddle boarding, uh, river cruising, uh, water jet safaris and, and different kinds of uh, swimming or floating. Um, up in the north, there are really nice rapids where you can do whitewater rafting. Um, you can go on a speedboat with a rib safari, for example. Rib means a rigid inflatable boat, which can take you uh, really, really um, far to the, to the sea, for example, to see the lighthouse islands. Um, then I would suggest that even in the winter times, uh, when the uh, lakes are not frozen yet, you try some floating with a thermal suit on. It's a really uh, great experience for clients who are looking for something really, really relaxing where you don't have to be really active. You just enjoy um, uh, floating in, in the water, maybe admiring the midnight sun or possibly in the wintertime admiring the, the northern lights. Uh, then all the natural parks can offer you a lot of activities in the forms of hiking or biking tours. Uh, then there's plenty of uh, wildlife. Uh, you can do uh, wildlife watching tours. We do have the, the bears, the wolves, the lynx, otters, wolverines, uh, different kinds of birds. So a lot of really, really interesting and sustainable activities uh, for the groups. So the nature provides a lot of opportunities. And then I would also like to remind that Finland is a year-round destination. Some of these activities can be done both in the winter and in the summer. But of course, there are activities that are only for the winter or only for the summer, weather permitting. 
So no matter what time of the year you bring the events mm-hmm. to Finland, there are there are a lot of options. Uh, whether the group wants something more relaxing, then it's the sauna and the wellness activities. Or if it's a group of men who want to go on a high speed, they can even have a rally world champion to to uh, guide them through uh, some rally co-driving. So different kinds of activities. Um, the winter obviously offers fantastic uh, opportunities for snowmobiling, snowshoeing in the in the parks. Uh, something something that can be either very very active or then again something very very relaxing so depending on the size of the group and and the, the desires of the group there are so many different options yeah i see or oh, we see here pictures bicycle uh, bicycles in the snow yeah or j- people jumping in the ice water with special protected uh, clothes And yeah, of course, the Husky safaris are really beautiful. So, uh, as we can see, uh, Finland is a destination where uh, attendees of events can do a, a couple of of, of um, group experiences and side programs, and also a lot of them or most of them are very sustainable. I think the sustainable aspect is an important aspect in your country too for for the mice uh, industry. Is this true? Definitely, it's a very important factor in all all the events. We always want to emphasize sustainability in in the choices that the groups make, in the activities that they want to want to do, and then all, also the service providers uh, pay a lot of attention to sustainability. And it not only means the environmental sustainability, but also like financial and social cultural. Uh, sustainability. So we always want to uh, provide local produce, we want to uh, support the local suppliers and that's why we are so happy to always uh, find the right uh, uh, suppliers and partners to our clients to actually uh, have the sustainability factors in in, in the events. But that's it's a, that is a very important part of, of the Uh, meetings industry here in Finland. Yes, and it's very, very good that this is that it is an important part because this is very important for our future too. So you show us in our audience now a lot of, let's say, water activities. Can you please a little bit summarize more the water activities and also important to know for what kind of group sites you want to recommend uh, activities on the waters? Because Finland is the land of the thousand seas and that's not true. There are much more than thousand trees. See thousand lakes and seas. So uh, please explain a little bit more about uh, uh, the water activities, group size, and what can be happened. Yes, absolutely. Uh, as you said, we are the land of thousands of lakes, and we have the an area which is called the Lakeland area. It it is Europe's largest uh, lake district, and it offers water and forest experiences all year round. Uh, when we talk about uh, real uh, incentive trips, then I would say that the ideal group size would be uh, less than 30 people. Uh, so then you can do all these uh, water activities like kayaking. You would have enough uh, boats uh, and kayaks and, or canoes for the group. You can do river rafting easily with a small group. But of course... Um, bigger groups can be organized as well. For example, in, in the Helsinki area, where we have the old wooden schooners, they take up to 70 people each. And you can have, for example, three different big boats and go on a cruise where all these magnet, uh, really, really beautiful, magnificent uh, boats cruise um, uh, by the open sea uh, at midnight when the, we have the midnight sun uh, shining at, at midnight. Uh, then you can do groups of up to 200. But I, I would uh, suggest that especially those more exclusive activities like the, the husky safaris or the reindeer safaris, uh, they would be for groups of less than 30 or less than 50 people. But anything up to 100 can be done. It just depends on, on what activities we choose for the clients. Yeah, maybe, and we saw nice pictures, also one picture of fishing, and also fishing can be a beautiful activity, be 
be calm, be very relaxed. So it sounds it sounds really really in interesting. Uh, do you fishing by yourself or in your family? Uh, unfortunately, we're not that kind of fishers, but we go berry picking. That's that's our thing. We always I I force my children to join us and to go berry picking uh, at the end of July, early August, and at, and we get so much of blueberries that we can enjoy them through the rest of the winter because we freeze them and then we can eat them every morning and have our vitamins because the the berries are really full of vitamin. But uh, there are plenty of people who do go fishing and they also do that all year round. Because we can do this winter fishing here in Finland as well. We just drill a hole into the ice. And then it's, it's so lovely to see because actually people do it um, outside of the Helsinki area as well. And you can see those people just having their small benches with them and sitting there on the open, open ice, just relaxing, enjoying the silence for hours and fishing at the same time. So maybe the, the fish that you get is not, not the, the main thing they go, go there for. The main thing is to go there and just to be by yourself and relax and, and enjoy the silence. Yeah, the experience is the main thing, to be together, enjoy the silence and find to yourself. Ines, you explain us now a lot about, uh, in general, Finland, about the country and a lot about their activities. But now let's be a little bit more concreter and let's have a look for the meeting and the conference facilities. So please, can you explain a little bit what kind of venues or what kind of special hotspots you, your country can offer for meeting planners uh, around the world, or especially in Germany, Austria, Switzerland, who are our audience here at my sport? Yes, absolutely. Uh, especially in terms of accessibility, Finland is really 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 good so you can easy easily access this country and enjoy all the i'm trying to get the video working for myself as well um uh the meeting options also they they are endless there are so many nice purpose-built uh, meeting facilities in all all around the country that also depends on the size of the group whether it's a board meeting for 20 people then we can offer a lot of options from the south here from Helsinki up to the north, where you can have a private log cabin for your um, uh, board meeting, uh, for example. Or then you can have a meeting for 10,000 people in a, a really nice congress center. And also in terms, uh, in terms of accommodation, Finland has so much to offer. Uh, unforgettable experiences in, in snow hotels, uh, glass igloos, treehouse hotels. And that also comes down to whatever the client wants. If it's a real association meeting, uh, there are different uh, kinds of options in different cities, depending on whether the clients look for local support from the local university, for example, or then if it's just a corporate meeting with, with a high-end group of uh, participants who want to... Uh, be accommodated in a very special place with a very special meeting venue. So in, in that sense, also Finland has plenty to offer in all of the regions. Here in the south, in, in the Helsinki area, in the Lakeland area, by the waters, and, and then in the archipelago, uh, in, in, in the small islands, and then up in Lapland, in the in the glass igloo villages, for example, or different different uh, kinds of smaller venues. Ines, uh, I saw the the tree. What is the the Arctic Treehouse Hotel? I, I, because I saw a movie in Germany. It was a, a, a crime story called Arctic Circle. And I know few sceneries are playing exactly in this beautiful house. What was the name? You know, is this, Ar is this Ar Arctic Treehouse or how? Arctic Treehouse Hotel. Yes, it's... that's a really exclusive venue. Uh, they have really nice hotel rooms and that has also been awarded by a lot of different uh, international awards. So that's, that's really a venue to, to look at. Um, yeah, it's, it was really, I was deep impressed when I thought this in the movie. So when we chat about uh, the meeting situation, in, especially in Helsinki, please, can you explain a little bit more about 
concretely to Helsinki for our audience? What, what, what kind of venues are offering the capital city of Finland? Yes, of course. Um, as the capital, Helsinki obviously offers the, the largest venues for meetings and, and congresses. Uh, there are four leading venues in Helsinki. The largest of them is called Messukeskus, and they have the capacity of 10,000 people. So they can host really, really big meetings and exhibitions and congresses. And then there are three other venues which are right in the city center of Helsinki. So really easy and sustainable choices in terms, terms of uh, how to move the people from their hotels to the venues, like the Finlandia Hall right in the heart of the city, uh, by a nice location by the bay, again, by the water, as the water is everywhere in Finland. Uh, the Finlandia Hall has the maximum capacity of 1,700 people, but they also have smaller auditoriums for 350 people and anything in between. Uh, then we have the, a historic venue in Helsinki, which is called Paasitorni. Uh, it's a really, really nice combination of a historic venue, new facilities and a hotel right next to it. And they have a capacity of 800 people and with 30 different kinds of meeting rooms for smaller groups. That also is located by a bay area. Uh, and then, then by the harbour, uh, in the heart of the city, we have the Marina Congress Centre, which also has a capacity for 700 people with one of the largest hotels in Helsinki located right opposite the venue. So in Helsinki, there are a lot of options for big uh, association meetings or, or corporate congresses or other, other events with a lot of uh, hotel capacity, capacity to, to support the events. Yeah, during your explanations, we saw a beautiful pictures of a couple of venues and also a couple of hotels like a Scandic, as we saw, and other things, a snow hotel and the Finlandia Hall. And the Finlandia Hall I visit by myself is a really amazing, beautiful uh, venue. Um, but I guess Finland, of course, is not only Helsinki as a hot spot and the nature around for let's say incentive or frame side programs Finland is a little bit more can you explain a little bit about some other hotspots some other cities where you think people need to know people need to see need, people need to visit and who are also have some uh, facilities for the meeting incentive conference and events in your beautiful country absolutely Finland is so much more than Helsinki um, although all the international flights do arrive to Helsinki and, and in a normal situation where we are not right now, uh, there are about uh, 60 airlines that fly to Helsinki and there are direct uh, flights from 140 different destinations, but there is so much more uh, to it than, than Helsinki. Uh, there are cities that are within a two hour uh, bus ride away from the capital, uh, like the city of Lahti which is a true winter sports um, city. They have a great facilities for winter sports. So if you have groups that are interested in, in sports or winter activities right uh, close to Helsinki, then Lahti is a good choice. They have a beautiful meeting venue, which is called the Sibelius Hall. Uh, that again is located by, by the, uh, the lake, a beautiful scenery. Uh, then within a two hour uh, ride away from Helsinki, there are two cities, uh, Tampere, uh, which is located in the central parts of Finland. They also have good meeting facilities for 2,000 people and a good uh, hotel capacity. And then uh, the city of Turku, which is located on the west coast of Finland. So in the archipelago uh, uh, area or region in Finland, they also have really, really nice venues for meetings and corporate events. And then the beautiful archipelago to support the, the, the site programs. And then, then in the Lakeland um, uh, region, we have cities like Jyväskylä and Kuopio, which also offer a lot of meeting facilities. And then, then of course, Lapland area with, with Rovaniemi as the capital of Lapland and then the other areas that, that can support smaller, smaller meetings. So uh, within this uh, beautiful country, so many different options. So I'm, I'm sure uh, there is the, the good choice to, to all of the clients. Yeah, it is a good choice for all of the clients. It's a very good words. We are coming to the end. But before 
we will finish this beautiful uh, MICE uh, webinar. Please, can you explain a little bit more about the support the Finland Convention Bureau can do for event planners, especially Germany, Austria, Switzerland, but all over the world? What kind of support services you offer to help and organizing events in Finland? Yes, we are always happy to support the clients with tips and information, looking for the right uh, options, right venues, most suitable hotels, the best service suppliers. And all this uh, information is always free of charge. Whenever there is a, even a slightest idea that I would like to organize event in Finland, then you can always contact us at the Finland Convention Bureau and we will help you in finding the right tools to, to actually make sure that Finland is the choice. We can uh, support you with pictures or videos and all this information and all the contacts. And then if we talk about um, association meetings, then we can put you in contact with the city convention bureaus who have their own support systems uh, for uh, association meetings, like uh, providing a free uh, city reception in, in the Congress city and, and other kinds of material to, to promote the meeting. So we are always happy to, to share information and, and to to find you the right options and right right partners and always free of charge. Ines, that sounds it's a very good service. And before I say in Finnish kitos and ole hyve, before I say this, please let me few words speak in German to our German speaking audience. So ihr Lieben, ihr habt es mitbekommen, das Finnland Convention Bureau unterstützt euch wirklich tatkräftig bei euren Planungen, Organisationen von Veranstaltungen in Finnland. Wenn ihr Fragen an Ines habt, könnt ihr die in die Kommentarleiste schreiben. Ines wird sie gerne beantworten. Wir haben dort aber auch Ines E-Mail-Adresse veröffentlicht, sowie den Link zur Webseite vom Finnland Convention Bureau. Dort findet ihr selbstverständlich noch viel mehr Informationen zu all den Vorgaben gestellten Venues und Locations, die ihr jetzt hier in dem Mais-Webinar gesehen habt. Ich hoffe, es hat euch ein wenig inspiriert und hat euch, wie anfangs äh, versprochen, ein ganz klein bisschen zu Finnland-Fans oder zumindest zu Finnland-Freunde gemacht. Ähm, an der Stelle bleibt mir nur zu sagen, äh, Dankeschön für eure Zeit, Dankeschön, dass ihr zugehört habt. Weitere Informationen auf den offiziellen Finnland-Seiten, aber selbstverständlich wie immer auch auf mysport.com. Ihr kennt das, www.mysport.com oder eben in den mysport-Communities in den sozialen Medien. Liebe Ines, kitos, kitos, kitos an der Stelle. Uh, thank you very, very much for your time. And, uh, to, and thank you very much for your very good presentation about Finland and about all the options and possibilities for doing events and congresses, incentives, and of course, um, um, corporate events and meetings too. So thank you very much. Greetings from Hamburg to Helsinki. Have a beautiful day. Stay safe and hope to see you soon. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.